Hi, Kat. Hello. Good. <laughs> it's nice to see you. Nice to see you. Nice too. to see you Thank again. Thank you for having me. Huh? Thank you for having me. Absolutely yeah. a pleasure, as a matter of fact. Um, we, uh, ever since uh, December, what day was it in December, your presentation here? I'm not sure. I, I want to say it's the third. I think it was December 3rd. Yeah. And that was since a uh, presentation in December 3rd. On December 3rd, the world, Kathy, has never been the same. Okay. I'll tell my word for it. I am constantly asked about Catherine Tavares. I'm asked about you in Italy, in France, in Germany, in the uh, United States, obviously. A lot of people watching that film and people who were here in the gallery, they were talking about your paintings, about your art. So the publicity have, have risen itself like a rocket sprung into the sky, together with quite a fame, my friends, quite a fame. Uh, you are a remarkable artist, and recently just was unbelievable. I had visitations. You know, ministries of cultures of different countries, they come straight to Kanyelsky Gallery from their country. They don't spend time in the United States. They fly straight into the gallery and fly straight back. So recently it was quite interesting. Uh, I was visitation by a Japanese Ministry of Culture. They were in the gallery for about an hour as they requested time. And uh, in addition to taking five uh, photographs of five paintings, which are not of mine, which are not given to universal patrimony, but they remain under my ownership complete. And, uh, and that what stirs a lot of visitations and visitors from all over the earth coming into the gallery, asking me to take, if they can take shots of these uh, five paintings. So, most remarkably, actually, a minister of culture of Japan, he asked specifically about Catherine Tavares, because I also show works of other artists of my own collection uh, to every visitor. And um, <clears throat> interesting enough, there was a specific question about Catherine Tavares. So Catherine Tavares' fame is spreading into Japan. And from Japan, as we know, as Japan being an intellectual capital of the Orient and part of a big part of the world, uh, J Japanese are really very cultural and intellectual people with extraordinary vision. Uh, spreads into Australia, Oceania, uh, Asia, Africa, parts, big parts of the world, Europe, South America, all over North America, Japanese cultural tradition is strong. So they were asking me to talk and to show them every painting of Catherine Tavares. And it was just three weeks ago. So, in short, I'm very happy, Catherine, that you're here today. And uh, I'm sure a lot of, a lot of our uh, watchers or spectators of this, of this interview with Catherine will be very happy to hear a voice of herself the most unique talent of this generation, uh, most remarkable, spectacular artists of North America and perchance uh, of the entire world at this time, Catherine Tavares. Spectacular success. But success is not only public. In other words, public success rises not so far, not so much by public relationship work that praise some piece of mediocre talent. Her art speaks for itself. Your, your art is spectacularly, remarkably talented. Thank you. So, Kathy, please, everybody who's watching the show today, and tell us something about your art or whatever you'd like to share with people who love you already. I mainly work in uh, color pencils and markers, and sometimes pastels. Uh, my inspiration usually comes either from music, um, other artists. And this one is 
This one has color pencils and markers. It's usually what I work in. And that's a representation of you, me, myself, and I. It's a representation of me. The eclipse in the background is also represents a person that was uh, very close to me. And sometimes in life, all you have is yourself, you know, so all you can count is on yourself for the most part. This was done somewhere around the year 2000. And what's the name of this painting particularly? This, me, myself, and I. Ah, uh, yes. myself, and I. So what's the instinctual force? Because uh, most of these paintings of yours, at least presented in this gallery, they come from unconscious mind. They come from not so much conscious thought, but from the instinct, from some primordial force that rises in your mind, in your body, and makes you want to paint, show this force on the canvas, rather than going on TV somewhere and saying, listen, listen, I feel so sexual today. I feel so erotic. I can just go and conquer the whole world with that force right now. Instead of this, you're taking your pencil, you're taking your pen, you're taking your ink, you're taking your brush, you're taking your surface, and show you, and you show it there. And one of the, certainly, because Eris derives from the, it's an instinct, it's instinct of life, instinct of development, it derives from your inner nature, and then when it shows itself, it get on the surface of your painting, then it transmits to your audience. The audience feels so revived. That's perhaps one of the largest secrets of your creative success. That's correct. It usually comes from inside, usually an event in my life you know, that I want to express. I was never a very verbal person. Ever since I was young, I would just pick up my pencil and just start drawing everything I feel or things that happen. Great. And what's your general attitude towards art? What is art to you? Art to me is an expression. Uh, it's, it's a gift that, that is given to us to express ourselves, to tell a story, you know. To tell the story of whatever was in your mind. Yes. That's right. And do you view the expression of art as an eye of beholder? Yes. There is no absolute estimation of absolute quality um, versus one beholder could like a, a black cube of. Malevich or Rothko more than some super genius and highest quality composition of Michelangelo, Raphael, Leonardo da Vinci, Titian, Caravaggio, etc., etc. Do you agree with this I concept? Agree. Yes. Agree. So I in the eye of art in the eye of beholder. Yes. Okay, so in this sense, and this is, I guess, the largest statement that contemporary art, of starting from the time of Impressionism, has made, and all through the 20th century has made, that look, I just throw a couple of lines, I just throw some colors on the surface, and perhaps there are some people who like it better than the work of Michelangelo. Yes, I agree with that too. So, in other words, contemporary art have made some sense, right, in this respect? Yes. Yeah. Right. So it's not so much that classical art that it's, it was trying to destroy the beauty and the gorge and magnificent of classical art, but it was trying to make a statement that art is in the eye of a beholder. Agreed. Great. So, history of art, if I may ask you a question, Kat, and I'm sure that people who love you and love your art, they would probably want to hear this. 
from the whole history of art. Who's your favorite artist? Who's your inspiration? It's uh, Frida. Frida? Yes. Frida Kahlo. Yes, Frida Kahlo. Ah, I love her me. work. She, she's a, a lot of people say that uh, I remind them of, of her. You know, that a, right? Yeah, she, she lived a, a life, you know, hard life and closed in. And the best subject she knew about was herself. So she painted about herself. Uh, that, that's true. That, yeah, Frida was interesting. And, um, her personal life was interesting too. Married to Diego Rivera, then fell in love all of a sudden surreptitiously with Leo Trotsky, the great communist. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Diego was awfully mad and jealous, right? Yes. There was a humongous pandemonium of revenges and passions and all the uh, all the all the fab all the fabulous um, firing. It was. She was very determined too. Very determined woman. Very determined woman. Uh, so and uh, <clears throat> what in 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 also in um, in the sense of continuity of a process. What do you think of the fame? And does does fame deter you from a process of painting of creativity? In other words, how does your fame that is upsurging right now, again like a rocket, I can only give you this visual comparison, uh, allegorically speaking, how does that fame um, puts itself into the process of your creativity? How does it shape your creativity? Does it suppress your creativity? Does it instigate your creativity? You're, you're not touched by fame, <laughs> so tell us. Tell I am, us. I'm very touched by fame. You know, I've never been in, in this position uh, before, uh, but it doesn't hinder uh, my process or anything. Uh, I keep humble, and I just keep pushing and, and drawing and putting everything that I can out there. That's great. So we hope we continue creating ever more evolving and glorious pieces, right honey? Yes. Do you plan to, <clears throat> this is I think the largest piece of yours which was in the exhibition, right? Yes. As we're finishing exhibition, by the way, exhibition longest time in this gallery for three months I gave Catherine because so fond I am myself personally and people who were here at the presentation and a lot of them could not even fit into the building and people who were watching the show and people who were told by other people and people who were reading etc it's about you etc etc they so touched and they understand three months it's just a great time for great justice but for Catherine Tavares so is this <coughs> Catherine is this a largest of your pieces that is a lot of so far. Yes. Are you, are you planning to work on the same size or are you planning to work on the larger sizes, smaller sizes of your paintings? Yes, mainly larger. I want to get into larger. A lot of our pieces are a little um, a small size, but when I do painting, I love painting on a big canvas. Oh, cool. Looking forward to seeing your larger pieces. Do you use assistance or you like to work all by yourself? I work all by myself for the most part. So maybe one day you have to pay if the size is too large, you might want to use a couple of assistants, right? Yes. <laughs> and I could recommend some people to be your assistants, Sounds right? Good. <laughs> Sounds great. So and anything in general about your plans for this year? Plans for this year is to at least get uh, one painting or one piece of art per month. So that I'll have a, a, a nice collection for, for, for the following year. Any changes in the direction where you're going, or it's uh, you just continue and follow the creative process? I just follow the, the, the process. Creative it's very process. sporadic. Super. Yes. Super. All right. Anything else, darling? No. <laughs> beautiful. <quite> it. Beautiful. <laughs> so thank you, everybody, for watching this. And it was, it's, uh, it's my personal pleasure to have presented here and interviewed uh, Catherine Tavares, 
a great star of contemporary art and um, will follow. Kathy, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Bye, everybody.